When you hear the phrase civil rights movement, who do you think of? Most of you probably think about activists such as Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Ruby Bridges, or the presidents that helped move this movement along, Lyndon B. Johnson and John F. Kennedy. Maybe you think of poets and authors such as Malcolm X, Maya Angelou, W.E.B. Du Bois, Harper Lee, or her infamous novel. Maybe some of you are reminded of sports figures such as Branch Rickey, Jackie and Rachel Robinson, Willie O'Ree, or Muhammad Ali. Maybe you're thinking of involuntary activists such as Thurgood Marshall or Booker T. Washington. While all of these people are important, this video focuses on people who might not be on your radar, but who made a world of difference in launching the civil rights movement. Some of you may have heard about Emmett Till, a young black man who was murdered in 1955. What you may not know is that Emmett's mother, Mamie, had an open casket funeral which allowed for her son's mutilated body to be viewed, photographed, and published in newspapers across the country. These pictures received much anger from citizens nationwide, forcing blacks and their white allies to rise up and fight for justice for Emmett and all blacks, thus igniting the civil rights movement. Everyone knows the story of Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott, but did you know there were several people who refused to give up their seats before Rosa Parks? Claudette Colvin was the very first, at only 15 years old. She was arrested, kicked, thrown in jail, cursed at, made fun of, ogled at, and ignored at the police station. The NAACP did not want to use Claudette's story because she was a teenager, and they didn't think teenagers were reliable. Claudette mentions in her autobiography that Rosa Parks' skin color and texture, as well as her hair, made her appear middle class, which was a more desirable image for the NAACP that they were trying to get out. Joanne Robinson was also involved in the Montgomery bus boycott. Her organization, the Women's Political Council, pleaded with city leaders repeatedly, but they refused to do anything about it. Because of that, Joanne began to make plans herself. She led a one-day boycott, passing out tens of thousands of leaflets across the city, leading others in the African-American community and their allies to sit on buses all over town, refusing to move. Joanne helped organize the entirety of the Montgomery bus boycott, but she also worked for various organizations helping women and African-Americans. Maud L. Williams Ballou was MLK's personal secretary. She did research, booked flights, edited MLK's speeches, including the infamous I Have a Dream speech. More than that, she helped organize the bus boycott and helped him establish his office at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. King mentions Ballou in one of his final speeches as an inspiration for him and for all. Bayard Rustin is best known as the head organizer of the March on Washington. The most important fact about Bayard is that he was gay. So while organizing and marching in the most infamous boycott to end black and white segregation, Bayard was also fighting for the rights of those in the LGBTQ community. Historian John D'Amelio calls Bayard the lost prophet of the civil rights movement. Anna Hedman was an activist in many ways. She was the first African-American woman to serve on the cabinet of a New York mayor. Along with Bayard Rustin, she helped A. Philip Randolph plan the March on Washington. She was the only woman among the key event organizers there. She volunteered and worked in numerous organizations, including the YWCA, among many more. She held many titles in various committees and even worked on Harry Truman's campaign trail. My favorite thing about her is that she's from Marshalltown, Iowa, which is the same state as me. We all remember the story of Ruby Bridges, and maybe some of you know the story of the Little Rock Nine. What you may not know is the woman behind it all. Daisy Bates became an active in the NAACP, becoming the president of the Arkansas chapter in 1952. Through his, this position, Daisy was able to get the nine black students into the all-white school, thus igniting the integration of blacks and whites. Her house can be visited today as a National Historic Landmark. Septima Poinsett Clark studied under W.E.B. Du Bois in college, going on to work with the YWCA and NAACP. She was a huge part of the integration of black teachers into schools. She spent most of her time teaching literacy to anyone who needed it and educated many blacks on their rights as U.S. citizens, including explaining their duties and showing them how to vote. The SCLC established the Citizenship Education Program modeled after Septima's workshops. She became the Director of Education and Teaching for the SCLC. She is remembered today as the mother of the movement. There you have eight unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. Maybe you've heard of some of them, maybe you've heard of none of them. Hopefully, you've learned at least one fact today. Thanks for watching.